the Age of Bronze was marked by the rise of great civilizations responsible for the development of new technologies and breakthroughs for humanity. Some ancient peoples, like the Sumerians, Babylonians, and Egyptians, stood out for their contribution to the improvement of agriculture and architecture. Other peoples, like the Phoenicians and Minoans, developed new forms of art, commerce, and writing. But there were also warlike civilizations which became prominent in the art of war, like the Mycenaean civilization. The Mycenaeans formed the first advanced civilization in continental Greece, with a well-organized system of city-states, urban organization, works of art, and writing system. According to DNA analyses, the Mycenaeans were part of the same group of tribes that migrated to Greece in the Middle Paleolithic period. These tribes spread to the islands and the region of the Peloponnese, originating the first Greek settlements. On the island of Crete, for example, one of these tribes founded the kingdom of the Minoans, which was Plato's inspiration for creating the legend of Atlantis. The famous Greek poet Homer used different names to refer to these tribes in his famous epic poem entitled Iliad. According to Homer, the tribes that stood out the most in that period of Greek history were the Achaeans, the Danans, and the Argives. Over time, with the dominance of agriculture, commerce, and bronze metallurgy, these tribes founded the first city-states of Greece. The largest and richest of those Greek cities was Mycenae, whose name was the basis for naming an entire civilization. The city of Mycenae was found in 1876 by the German archaeologist Heinrich Schleimann. Heinrich used Homer's accounts as the basis for his investigations. To the surprise of many scholars of the time, the accounts were right. In his poems Iliad and Odyssey, Homer described the land where Mycenae and other cities were built and the surrounding landscape. With these descriptions, Heinrich and his team discovered the sites where the ruins of the cities of Mycenae, Tyrans, Pylos, and Troy were located. Around 1750 BC, the Mycenaeans and Minoans of the island of Crete created a busy line of trade between their main cities. Trade between the two kingdoms added new influences to the Mycenaeans, who began to copy the Minoan style of art and writing. For this reason, the historical period is known as the creto mycenaean period. However, unlike the Minoans, who had a culture focused on commerce and navigation, the Mycenaeans were openly a warlike society. Little is known about the beginning of the Mycenaean civilization, but legend has it that the founder of Mycenae was the hero Perseus, half-brother of Hercules, famous for killing the Gorgon Medusa. There are indications that in 1500 BC, Mycenae was already a well-structured city, with strong walls in all of its extension. The excavations in Mycenae revealed much important evidence for the understanding of Mycenaean society. The Mycenaeans buried their kings in secret tombs known as tholos, which were excavated inside natural hills. In all, nine tombs were found. A large part of them was intact, and many objects could be rescued for study and taken to museums. A curious and unusual fact is that the Brazilian Emperor Pedro II traveled to Greece to visit the excavations. He was invited by Heinrich Schleimann for a lunch organized inside one of these tombs. In 1350 BC, the walls of Mycenae and some nearby cities were rebuilt to house the rapid growth of the population. The stones used to build the new walls were so big and heavy that the walls became famous for being built by a giant cyclops. Many myths and fantastic stories of ancient Greece happened during the Mycenaean period. Heroes and demigods such as Perseus, Hercules, Theseus, Odysseus, Achilles, and many others were part of the Mycenaean world. Many Greeks of the classical period looked to their Mycenaean ancestors as a people closer to the divine lineage and capable of great deeds and achievements. Although they lived in Greece, the Mycenaeans were vastly different from the traditional image we have of the ancient Greeks. Their clothes, architecture, weapons, and armor were more rustic and robust. Many times they valued a more aggressive appearance. The Mycenaeans used many weapons made of bronze, including spears and axes with threatening shapes. Their swords were incredibly well made, and the most beautiful had engravings and handles made of gold. The shields used by Mycenaeans were large and heavy. Some were fully coated in bronze. The warriors' armors were the main highlight, with a great variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. Their helmets were meant to express the courage and strength of the warriors, 
they were adorned with horsehair and horns. They also used animal skins, such as bovine leather for their shields, and feline skins, such as lions and leopards to complement their armor. The Mycenaeans had the best armors of their time. Some covered almost the entire body, being made with large bronze plates that made them quite heavy. To fight while wearing these armors, the warriors had to truly be strong. The Mycenaeans also made recurrent use of war chariots, spreading terror on the battlefields when they tried to run over their enemies. In Mycenaean society, the king was the military and political commander. The people were divided between free workers and slaves. The Mycenaeans produced and exported wheat, oil, wine, ceramics, and bronze, using gold to create jewelry and decorative pieces. Among the pieces produced in gold are the famous funeral mass, made to cover the faces of the deceased and preserve their image. The variety of products produced by Mycenaeans allowed them to develop a great sea trade route. Mycenaean objects were discovered in Syria, Egypt, Cyrus, Italy, and the Iberian Peninsula. As time went by, the Mycenaeans replaced the elegant style of the boats used by the Minoans and began to create stronger ships focused on combat. Little is known about the original religion of the Mycenaeans, but they created the basis of Greek mythology as we know it. The main deity of the Mycenaeans was Poseidon. At the time, he was considered the god of the seas, land, and earthquakes. Around the year 1370 BC, several earthquakes occurred in Greece and nearby regions. The earthquakes caused so much destruction that the island of Crete was devastated. The Mycenaeans took the opportunity to claim the right to rule the island, considering that it was an important commercial port in the Aegean Sea. In the following two centuries, the Mycenaeans incorporated the Minoans into their culture, further expanding the influence of the Greek kingdoms. The most famous of the Mycenaean kings was Agamemnon, who reigned in Mycenae. His brother, Menelaus, reigned in the young city of Sparta. Both kings married Spartan princesses. Agamemnon married Clytemnestra, and Menelaus married a woman who would leave her name in history, Helen. Agamemnon spared no effort to expand the maritime trade routes with other kingdoms and empires. This caused Mycenaean ships to travel to ports in increasingly distant and exotic cities. One of these cities was in a privileged geographic location. Troy was to the west of Anatolia, where today is Turkey, more precisely in a region called Hisarlik. As there are strong winds in the region that constantly change the tides, many boats needed to slow down their pace or even find refuge in some pier for several days, waiting for the calm of the sea. Taking advantage of this situation, Troy collected taxes from the boats and goods that passed through its territory. Many of these goods were sold in the city itself. If the merchant refused to pay, his goods, boats, and all his money were confiscated by the Trojans. But who were the Trojans? We know little about Troy and its inhabitants. It is believed that they were a part of people known as Dardani, or at least they built their culture together with them. We know that the city of Troy welcomed travelers from different regions. For this reason, Trojans had various styles of clothing, jewelry, and military equipment. One of the few documents of antiquity that quotes the Trojans was written by the Hittites, who referred to them as Wilusa. Troy remained an unknown entity for a long time. It was first found by Frank Halvert in 1863. In 1870, Heinrich Schleiman led the excavations of the city. To his surprise, there was not only one Troy, but nine cities, one built above the other. Heinrich's excavations revealed that Troy had been invaded, plundered, and destroyed countless times over the centuries. The city was rebuilt several times over the rubble of the previous incarnation. At the time of the Trojan War, the city was already in its sixth phase. According to Homer, it had strong walls and divided into two or three sections, which made the city an exceedingly difficult fortress to be torn down. The taxes charged by Troy were considered abusive by other kingdoms. This generated conflicts between kings and traders. In particular, the Mycenaeans were quite displeased, for there were a kingdom of proud warriors who considered the Trojans disrespectful. Troy was ruled by King Priam, who sent his son Paris on a diplomatic mission to Sparta to try to appease the situation with the Mycenaeans. Paris was marveled by Queen Helen, wife of King Menelaus. There are two versions of the story of Paris and Helen. 
One says that Helen was kidnapped by Paris. Another says that she would have left of her own free will with the young prince. King Menelaus was furious at the offense and asked his brother Agamemnon, who had the largest army in Greece, for help. Agamemnon identified the perfect opportunity to clear war on Troy and end this abusive tax collection. Agamemnon gathered his army and assembled a fleet of ships. According to Homer, the impressive array had more than a thousand warships. King Agamemnon also called the legendary heroes Achilles and his group of warriors known as the Myrmidons. The Mycenaean army sailed the Aegean Sea and surrounded Troy, starting a war that would last almost 10 years. The Mycenaeans launched several attacks against the city, but all failed. In one of these attacks, Patroclus, a friend and lover of Achilles, was killed by Prince Hector of Troy. To avenge Patroclus' death, Achilles challenged Hector to one of the most famous duels in history. Homer describes an epic struggle. Two of the greatest champions of his time fought to the death, near the gates of the city of Troy. Finally, Achilles delivered the fatal blow and killed Hector. Achilles, still furious at his friend's death, tied the feet of Hector's corpse to his chariot and made three laps around the perimeter of the city, dragging his body on the stony ground before all the Trojans. After this, the morale of the Trojans was extremely low, but even so, they did not surrender the city. Then the Mycenaeans conceived the plan of the famous Trojan horse. Using the wood of some of their ships, they built a great wooden horse and took it to the Trojan gates, where they put it as a gift for the Trojans, who had great esteem for horses. The Mycenaeans returned to their ships and faked their retreat. The Trojans relieved to have escaped the siege, opened the gates, and brought the wooden horse into the city and started a big party to celebrate the victory. Later at night, practically everyone in the city was plunged into an alcoholic sleep. At that moment, a hidden door in the belly of the wooden horse was opened. Out of it came Achilles and his warriors. The invaders easily killed the sleepy guards and opened the gates of Troy. The Mycenaean army, hiding behind some hills, finally managed to enter the city. The city was looted and burned. Practically all men were killed, including King Priam. The women and children were enslaved. According to the legend, Achilles died in Troy, wounded by a poisoned arrow that hit its heel, shot by the cowardly Paris. Other versions say that Achilles survived and headed to new battle and novels. The sordid Paris was killed that night. The Mycenaeans returned victorious to Greece, but many were punished by the gods and could never go home. King Menelaus took Helen back to Sparta, but after Menelaus' death, Helen was expelled from the city, having died alone in exile. One of the few survivors of the Trojans was the warrior Aeneas. According to the ancient Romans, he fled to Italy and gave birth to the Roman lineage. Much of this narrative comes from the poems of Homer. Although the works include gods, they are not entirely fictional. The evidence points to a real war in that region and Troy was looted and burned. The texts written by the Hittites say that a people came from the sea and attacked the city of Troy. The texts of the Hittites also mention a Trojan prince named Alexandros, who may have been Paris or served as inspiration for him. Another possibility is that there are a new wave of seismic activities in 1300 BC, causing the decline of many civilizations. The siege of Troy will have happened in that period, and historians believe that part of the city wall fell due to an earthquake. The Mycenaeans camped outside the city did not suffer much damage and took advantage of the chaos to invade Troy. Coincidence or not, the god of the Mycenaeans was Poseidon, who was also the god of earthquakes. As such, from the point of view of the Mycenaeans, Poseidon helped them conquer Troy. The Trojan War told by Homer is a fantastic saga. Completely true or not, it traveled throughout the centuries and to this day we use expressions beware Greeks bearing gifts or Achilles heel. Still, because of these earthquakes, many people migrated from one region to another and many kingdoms completely failed. All these series of natural disasters, wars and migrations caused the collapse of the Bronze Age. And in Greece, a warrior people known as Dorians left Macedonia to conquer the cities of the Mycenaeans. The Dorians had equipment and weapons made of iron, 
which was an enormous advantage over the Mycenaeans, who still used bronze. After the fall of the Mycenaean Kingdom, Greece entered a period known as the Greek Dark Ages, of which little is known. Slowly, it gave rise to classical Greece, making the Mycenaean civilization an important link in Western history.